Oh, Stacy. Oh. Hello. Nice to see you again. We've been receiving lots of exciting questions from our viewers. Theodos Batagi from Jeddah wants to know When can we expect cars to start driving themselves? Well, they already can. They're just not allowed to do it yet. During testing, someone still has to sit behind the wheel in case something goes wrong. But vehicles that come very close to the definition of the fully autonomous car have already gone into production. They use cameras, sensors, and radar to detect, for example, cars in the blind spot. Or they sense when they're drifting out of their lane and make corrections. Other systems can hit the brakes in emergencies or park all by themselves. The cars of the future will be able to do everything on their own. Electric cars can also communicate with each other, and a citywide network could calculate the quickest routes. Autonomous taxis would drive in convoys. Advantages are less smog, less energy consumption, and greater safety. Just one problem if an accident happens, who's liable? Convoy driving is already being tested. It's not hard for humans to pace themselves and keep a safe distance, but automatic systems are still struggling. So, when will cars become truly autonomous? Transport experts predict it'll only take a few more years. If you have a question, write us by going to our website, DWDE Tomorrow Today. See you soon, and don't forget. The most important thing is to never stop asking questions. And here to tell us more about exactly how many years it might take until we see autonomous cars out there on the road is an expert from the Innovation Center for Mobility and Societal Research here in Berlin, Florian Lennart. Hi. Now, cars will be driving autonomously. Isn't that too risky to rely on computers? Well, I think this is something that is uh, much discussed at the moment, but uh, I do think that uh, autonomous systems like this can actually uh, improve safety uh, in a number of situations. Yeah, situations like what? Usually it feels kind of risky and some people might even be afraid of it. Well, we forget that, uh, uh, that we ourselves are also a quite risky uh, being, so uh, many accidents are, of course, caused by driver error, and um, uh, obviously computer-assisted systems can uh, often improve on that uh, safety performance. Okay, I understand. And, and what about uh, actually leaving the steering to the car itself? I mean, would you like to do that? I love to drive myself, so what about you? Well, I think, of course, everybody enjoys, or many people do enjoy also driving and being in the driving seat, as we say. Um, however, of course, there are many situations where either perhaps you don't have a driver's license, but you do want to access individual mobility, perhaps you're too old or disabled. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of people who could benefit from being able to access autonomous vehicles. Um, I think it also gives us an opportunity to rethink mobility in cities in a more uh, fundamental way. Uh Okay, and sometimes it might be even nice to leave everything to the car, for example, when you're in a traffic jam, right? Yeah. That's right, but on the other hand, the reason we have traffic jams is that we have far too many cars in cities. This is becoming a major problem for cities worldwide. And if we can reinvent uh, uh, individual automobility, which means that we provide uh, mobility to individuals in many different ways on demand in cities, then we can start replacing that old fat, uh, fossil private automobile uh, that is really very innovative efficient way of organizing urban transport. What does that mean in detail? I mean, what kind of mobility are you dreaming of? What kind of vehicles? Well, I think we also need to rethink vehicles. Um, at the moment, we use uh, cars that weigh two tons to transport an individual who weighs 70 kilos. Mm. This is obviously economic nonsense and energetic nonsense. So in some ways, we need to think about how we can build lighter uh, uh, cars and vehicles in cities, uh, vehicles that don't need to travel as fast, um, and how we integrate them then into car sharing and or autonomous taxi services such as described in your film. So it's actually not about sitting in a car by yourself, but it's more about individual mobility of just 
getting from here to there? Yes, I think we need to reorganize cities to enable um, the, the widest choice of travel modes for the individual um, and not just limit it to uh, the, the private fossil automobile. Mm -hmm. So if we think about um, small electric cars and these shared taxis that your film showed as part of a, an overall on-demand transport system in the cities where you connect public transport, buses, mm -hmm. um, bikes and these autonomous vehicles, then that's an exciting way we can reorganize transport in the future. Are actually our automobile companies, uh, which rely on the old model on just producing cars, are they prepared for that new concept? I think they understand well that there's a challenge on the horizon. I think, uh, uh, as with the oil industry, one is making very good money of selling these uh, yeah. traditional cars at the moment. So I think unless um, demand drops off, of course, they will continue to do so. I do think that they're investing heavily and are obviously also technology leaders on these issues. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Okay.